Hello, welcome to Derek's World of Motorcycling. I'm Derek. Today I'll be talking about the top five things that I hate about classic motorcycling. I've only owned classic bikes for the past three years, so I'm a relative newbie to the scene. But it's been really enjoyable. Before, I was a keen sports bike rider, but a lot has changed since then. I now feel that there are too many obstacles to riding fast bikes on UK roads. For example, a general decline in driving standards, a lack of road investment, increased surveillance, speed cameras, cops in unmarked cars. You've even got civilians with in-car cameras that will send videos of you to the police just because they don't approve the way that you ride. I do still have a modern bike, a Kawasaki ZZR 1400. But nowadays I spend most of the time looking at the speedo rather than concentrating on the road ahead. These are some of the reasons why my focus has shifted more towards classic bikes. There are other reasons. The enjoyment I get from repairing and restoring them. And then there's the social scene. Going to meets, meeting fellow owners, gathering information. But like most things in life, it's not all plain sailing. So without further ado, in ascending order of worseness, is there such a word? Maybe I just made it. Here are the top five things that I hate about classic motorcycling. So number five, fuel taps. Or more precisely, remembering to turn the fuel taps on or off. It's actually becoming more second age to me now that I'm riding classic bikes more often. But in the early days, there were many times when I'd forget to turn the fuel on, which put me into a few awkward situations on the road. Bikes will still run with the fuel turned off, at least until when the leftover fuel in the carb bowls runs out. It also causes panic because the first thought is always, oh, there we go, bloody hell, bike's broken down. It's also important to turn the fuel off when the engine's not running. Now it shouldn't really be a problem if your carb float heaters are in good condition and they're properly shutting off the fuel, but a leaky carb can overflow which may cause liquid fuel to go into a cylinder. And so the next attempt to start that engine will result in a piston trying to compress a fluid. Computer says no, end result, hydraulic lock, wrecked engine. Another day, another t-shirt, and we're at number four in my list, carburetors. Now this would have been higher up in my list if my Honda CB750 was my only classic bike, as its carbs have been such a pig to work on. For example, adjusting main jet needle clip settings is a common carb adjustment, but to adjust them on my CB750 means removing all the carbs from the engine is a proper gym workout because the inlet rubber boots onto which they're mounted are very tight fit. Refitting them is even worse. Thankfully, the carbs on my two strokes are easier to set up and adjust. Their needle clips can be adjusted without removing them. However, the carbs on all of my classics have leaked at some point. All carbs have been set up as per the workshop manuals and all my bikes run okay, but they probably could do with being looked over by someone well versed in the dark arts of carb tuning. All I can say is, thank God for fuel injection. To number three in the list, weak brakes. I was shocked when I took my CB750 out for its first run. Approaching a junction, I pulled on the front brake lever with my usual two fingers. The squeal from the brake disc was the only clue of any braking action. In a panic, I jumped on the rear brake and managed to stop the bike in time. That was lesson number one. You must plan ahead when stopping a classic bike. Like a ship's captain has to plan when stopping a cruise liner. As for emergency stops, well, you might as well just accept they're going to turn into emergencies. The worst bike for braking is my Kawasaki H1 Mach 3. It has drum brakes front and rear. I had the front brake shoes relined by Villiers in the Birmingham area. It improved things but not by much. It's the only one of my bikes where I have to use four fingers on the front brake lever. So to number two on the list, mechanical uncertainty. Classic bikes can be moody old buggers at times. If I'm riding a classic bike to an event, I'll usually check it over the day before. 
At some point I'll start the engine, just for a little more reassurance. But all these checks only partially guarantee that the bike will cooperate on the day. Warm starting can be an issue too, which is especially annoying when it happens at a gathering. Starting difficulties can be the source of much amusement. And then there's always the fear of being stranded on the road. Before I get to the number one in my list, here are some honourable mentions. No fuel gauges. So you're riding along and your bike loses power. First thought is, oh no, something's broken. But it's just time to switch to reserve. Unless you were already on reserve, in which case, you're stopped. Mind you, it's probably a good thing that two straight triples don't have fuel gauges. That'd just be depressing. Classic bike purists. We've all seen these types of classic bike meets. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. That's a purple H2B model, but that colour wasn't introduced until the following year with the H2C model. Come on guys, you need to chill out! At last, the number one thing I hate about classic motorcycles is... Cleaning them! I absolutely hate cleaning motorcycles! Ah! With classic bikes, there are so many places where muck can go, but where hands can't. Proper cleaning usually requires some level of disassembly, and classics usually have lots of lovely extra chrome to clean and polish too. Spoked wheels look so cool, on cars as well as bikes, but cleaning them feels like writing lines in school detention. I'm not the only one that cleans spokes individually, am I? So that's my top five. Do you agree? What are your hates? Feel free to list them in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.